Hello and welcome back. I'm Shayna Searcy and I am so determined to paint with you today. Normally I'm very excited to paint, but today has been a rough day, the last couple of days, uh, for getting motivated to paint. And actually I've been painting, but I feel like everything I paint, um, especially when I'm trying to record a video tutorial for you, is just not coming out the way I intend or I make a mistake along the way. And I just feel really disconnected from my work and what I'm trying to teach to y'all. So um, I know that that will come back, but today we are going to paint something very simple, a super simple landscape. For me, I just need to go back to the basics. I know I am a big proponent of paint every day, um, even if you're just mixing colors or putting lines on a page or swatches on a page. So that's what we're gonna do today. We are just going to paint super simple with some a few basic colors and um, really just try to reconnect with the craft. It's okay to have bad days uh, when you're painting and it's okay to not feel really motivated uh, to paint every single day, but I'm going to stick with it just like with anything else, like with exercise or some other task that I have committed to do. Um, I still want to paint. And of course, I still want to give you something that could be useful. So let's bring it back to basics, super simple landscape. We're going to be using just a couple colors, cerulean blue, phthalo blue, sap green, Payne's gray for the most part. I think I'm going to throw a little cadmium yellow in there at some point, but really just the two blues, the green and the Payne's gray. Um, I'm going to start with my sky and I'm going to paint a very nice, not perfect um, gradient wash across the sky. I'm going to mimic some clouds uh, just by leaving some spaces blank. Uh, but I'm using this beautiful cerulean color and I'm going to start over on the left and I'm going to work my way over to the right by adding more water as I go because I want it to be much lighter on the right than I do on the left. So I'm going to start by getting things kind of really wet and juicy and working my way across the page. And what I'm going to try to do is mimic what um, a sky would look like with big wispy clouds in the sky. Um, nothing, you know, super defined or fluffy or anything like that. Just some whiter areas in one section, um, than in the other. So, and the darkest part of the sky is going to be to the left. So that's what I'm going to work on now. And I'm just going to really concentrate all my energy and efforts on just focusing on the paint and what I'm trying to do, trying to let go of all my frustrations with, Everything else that was going on with painting. Also, everyone else in my house is sick right now. So varying, varying stages of illness and just still trying to get life done. Um, so that can also lend to feeling like you don't have as much time to paint or you're really rushed. Um, you know, and that way when you do sit down to paint and you feel really rushed, you want everything to be super perfect and there's so much pressure. Um, and yeah, maybe that's a little bit of what I was feeling, that super pressure to get it exactly perfect and not being very forgiving of myself right now. So with this project, I'm going to be very forgiving and just kind of go with the flow and get it done. And it is what it is at the end. And that's okay too. So you can see here, I'm actually really happy with this guy right now. Um, we have this nice cloud uh, covered area and then the dark blue to the left. And I'm going to add more pigment to that. Everything is still very wet. So I'm working wet on wet now. I started wet on dry as I filled the page. Um, and now everything is still wet from my first layer and I'm just not letting it dry. So I'm continuing to add paint and water to it as I blend out some richer, deeper tones on the left-hand side there. All right, I'm gonna move on. I'm really happy with my sky so far and I think it's gonna look great once I get the foreground in. So let's concentrate on that. I'm going to move to um, 
my rolling hills here and I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to pull out some sap green with a bunch of water and start with a really light wash of this sap green right along the front kind of rolling hill here and just keeping it um, pretty simple. I want it to be in the long run at the end. I want it to be pretty textured so I'm not too worried about it being a perfect flat wash. Now some of the other projects I was working on, um, some of the recordings I was actually working on with a subject that had perfect flat washes or perfect gradients that weren't very textured but were very controlled. Um, and that was creating a little frustration for me, um, for sure. And it was, again, because I was rushing and I was not letting things dry properly. Um, so I realized that I just needed to walk away from that for now and I'll do something a little bit more forgiving that I can rush through a little bit. So in my second hill, I am going to put in a darker color. So this second hill, my plan is to be um, kind of in shadow. So it's going to, the front of it is going to look much darker than the rest. Like not a lot of light is hitting it and it's going to be darker and deeper in shadow and very textured as well. Um, so I'm starting off with a slightly darker sap green now, but it's going to get even darker. I'm going to add a bunch of layers to it, but we're going to start with just a wash of sap green. I'm just trying to be careful next to the first hill that I put on. And this is where that patience comes in. Um, that first hill is not dry completely and I don't want them to completely run into each other. They are kind of similar in colors right now. Um, but. I am going to separate them and I don't want them to get too muddled early on because it'll just create more work for me separating them and creating muddy, layer, muddy layers later. So I'm trying to be careful and patient with myself. All right, I'm taking some of this darker color and I'm gonna to start to add it to my first till here. And I just wanna add um, some areas of shadow. I don't wanna take over the whole thing with this darker color because again, I want this to be a little bit lighter than the hill above, but I'm adding in a little shadow and texture. I'm just gonna blend it out and just play a little bit in this area. After I'm done with that, I'm going to let these two sections completely dry before I move on to additional layers. So go ahead and take a break if you'd like, or go get a cup of tea or use your heat tool to dry those layers when you're done. All right, I think they're nice and dry now. And now we're going to get to into some darker colors. So I'm just adding some phthalo blue. And I'll also probably grab a touch of Payne's Gray to deepen the color here um, for this darker green. And again, we're gonna put it on this second hill. You can see here, much darker green. And I started with the lighter green because I am going to let some bits of that shine through, um, but I do ultimately want the majority of this hill to be a much darker color, um, especially towards the bottom, towards that first hill in front there. But that doesn't mean every little bit is going to be all the same darker color. There will be variations in value and texture. All right, I think it's time to get into that last hill in the back, which is gonna be of the lighter variety, not quite as dark as the second one, but maybe a little bit darker than the first one. 
Um, and I'm going to blend that out as well right up to the skyline. Luckily, my sky is completely dry. We haven't touched that in a while. And so far, I'm feeling much more satisfied with this painting. I feel like it's much less, um, much more forgiving and less controlled than a bunch of the other stuff I was working on, my own paintings included for myself. Um, and it's just allowing me to really use my brush and create texture and create shadows and depth and I don't know, just loosen up a little bit. So sometimes you need to just kind of walk away from whatever you're doing and do something completely different, which this shore is. Same idea, I'm working on landscapes, um, but I'm working on a much different type of landscape than this. So I am definitely feeling the benefits of kind of walking away and doing this project instead just to feel successful, to feel like I'm a good painter and I'm not frustrated at every step of the way. So adding a little bit more texture now um, in the foreground hill here with some of that darker color. And that top one is still wet, but I'm going to go ahead and add some additional shadows there but they're going to bleed out a little bit and be softer and not as textured as that dries and that's okay and now it's all about continuing to layer and add shadows in um, where i feel like the painting could use more depth more texture uh, more interest. So I'm just going to work on that and you work on yours. Um, don't be afraid to kind of find your way through the painting, play in a bunch of different areas, experiment a little with some texture wet on wet and then also wet on dry with some blending out. Those can both produce really great um, looks for um, the piece. You can see on the left there, it's more wet on wet and has smoother, softer transitions. And on the right, on that second hill, you can see a lot of separation between the areas and the texture and it was more wet on dry. So both are um, great methods to produce really interesting textures. All right, now I'm gonna add in some trees to the horizon line here. I'm just going to dot in. Um, I used a little bit of sap green as well as some cadmium yellow mixed in to make them a little bit lighter and brighter. But I'm just going to dot those in. Let's see, three, maybe four. Let's do a fourth one. And maybe a fifth one too. We'll add one to this other side here. So just dotting in these irregular blobs that are going to be trees. We'll give them trunks. I'll use a little bit of burnt umber, probably a little brown burnt umber. Here we go. Um, to add to their trunks. And of course, it's a nice bright sunny day, so we have to give them some shadows in front of them. So just a little bit darker green with some of that Payne's Gray in it. Don't overthink your shadows. Just make sure they're all kind of leaning in the same direction and just at the base of the tree, they're connected. But they don't have to be perfectly identical to the shape above, but you know, a close approximation. And lastly, I'm going to mix up a really dark green with lots of phthalo, sap green, and Payne's gray to put in some tall grasses in the front corner here to kind of offset the composition of the trees in the back right side. Um, we'll put something uh, similar in kind of shape and not really similar in shape, but like overall um, amount of space it takes up in the painting up in the foreground just to balance it out a little bit and you can see how I'm tapering off down towards the bottom you can even switch to um, I'm going to switch to my rigger brush which is a longer skinnier brush to get even thinner 
more um, wispy shaped grasses there. And here we are, time to pull off our tape and see the fruits of our labor. We pushed through, I pushed through. Um, I hope you weren't having a bad painting day, but I pushed through to complete this super simple landscape. Um, it gave me actually quite a bit of joy just to get through something from beginning to end without feeling super intimidated by it or like it had to be perfect. There was a lot of forgiveness in this, creating lots of texture and being loose. Um, I love the sky and I really love the little trees in the background with their shadows there kind of looming over that second hill. Um, so this is great. Sometimes you just have to take a step back, go back to basics, get really simple, and then also talk about like what you love about what you just created. Um, it really helps. I can feel myself kind of feeling a lot brighter and a lot better now. And just feeling more connected with my craft um, and with uh, painting. So thank you so much for joining me for this tutorial. Hopefully you got something out of it other than me sulking that I was not having a great day. But now I'm having a fabulous day because I got to paint with you all. So thank you so much. I'm Shana Searcy. Don't forget to check out the description for the links to supplies that we use in this video. I'll make sure to link them in there and also links to to my studio crew um, classroom and my Instagram channel. So see y'all soon. Thanks for painting with me. You were fantastic. And uh, I'm so excited now to paint in our next video.